guys, this is Casey is again, and th today we're going to talk about wrestling. And today we're going to talk about the Ric Flair uh, celebration video, whatever they call this thing. Um, that's on Peacock on the WWE Network pot selection. And um, this is heavily done by WWE. You could tell Peacock had no put no input in this. This is all WWE. And I hate to say this, if you guys know what happened during the Dark Side of the Ring about the plane ride from hell. And yes, we all heard about this. It just nowadays, like when you hear about it and then you put a face to the the victim and it kind of makes it even more real. And I would like to, I like how we're moving on, but I don't know, I guess WWE's on good grace, has Ric Flair on their good graces because they did a documentary. They mainly talked about how <laughs> Ric Flair found out his real name like three years ago, and I'm not talking about Richard Flair, Flair, how you pronounce his last name. But, um, but talk about his bring up, obviously, and then, you know, he talks about how he went to AWA and being trained from Fern Gagne. I mean, I like that, and then you see how, like, you know, I wouldn't say buffed it, but he was, like, big. He was, like, I wouldn't even say he was bodybuilder. He, he wasn't. He was kind of chunky, but muscles. He was kind of like right in the middle. I mean, he looked like nowhere near like Otis, but he was just a. It's he was built kind of. It was kind of hard to explain. I show you a picture, but um, it show you talk what I'm talking about. But, yeah, he went through the AWA, then he, they were talking about how he went through the NWA, his run through that, his WCW run, his early uh, WCW run, and then they glossed, really glossed over the w, his first WWF run. Um, they just said he left because Jim Hurd didn't know what the hell he's doing. And he brought the belt to the big gold belt and took it to the three. And, uh, and then he, he did his year and a half or two year run with WWF. And it was good, but they did, I, they just really glossed over it. They talk about it where, oh, it was the best two years of my career. And then he was uh, kind of sidelined because, you know, they had the Bret Hart, you got Shawn Michaels, you had Razor, and Diesel. They were all coming up through the rankings. And it was time for the youth movement. And Vince knew about it. Uh, it was time. And, like, he had... Ric Flair had his WWF run. It was good. Too bad they didn't have that. WrestleMania 8. Ric Flair versus Hulk Hogan. You didn't get that until WCW on TV. There has been reports there was house shows of it. And it didn't do good. But you figure it should have been great. I mean you got Hulk Hogan versus Ric Flair. So it should have been great. But... Then he left. They went back to WCW. You know, getting the belt a few more times, obviously. And then, you know, the whole thing with um, when WCW got bought out. They pretty much fast forward and did that. And, well, they did a little bit with, um, I believe, where uh, he was getting his head shaved from the NWO and painted it black. And 
Bishop was like, what do you mean you don't want your head shaved and paint it black? Like, it's good for business. <laughs> it makes money. <laughs> but, um, they were, I, and I can understand, they were pushing Ric Flair down in the ground that in the later years of WCW. They did not want Ric Flair to be the star anymore. They wanted the NWO and Hogan and Goldberg. And then later on with Russo, you know, bringing up the young blood or the new blood. But they didn't talk about that part. But And then he said uh, he was waiting for a year for right after it shuts down that Ric Flair was just sitting. He had nothing to do for a year. So, uh, in 2002, they brought him back. Well, it was more like, two, wasn't it 2001? I mean, it was at the very end of 2001. It was right after Survivor Series, after they did WWF versus The Alliance. And it was Survivor Series, and after that, Ric Flair came out. But it was damn near 2002 at time and then uh, let's see then he kind of lost his confidence because he was older and he worked his first match he didn't want to wrestle he wanted to do like behind the scenes stuff but they finally pushed him to wrestle and Undertaker's like yeah I want to wrestle Ric Flair. It's like it's going to be one of my last chance to do it. Even though I think he was in the WWE for seven to eight years before he retired. He retired until he wrestled in TNA and then he t retired again and then hit, they even brought up about the, his last match. You know Ric Flair's last match. And then they said five days later he had another one. And then they said he'll never retire. I'm like, so you pretty much admit that the whole Ric Flair's last match was bullshit. So, um, it was a good show, but they did what they do best if they want to bring something, someone back who had some really bad history They'll whitewash the hell out of them. I mean, per perfect example. Look at what they did with the Ultimate Warrior. They they kind of glossed over in his any thing. They were like, oh yeah, he's good, and then they like they're kind of like, oh, yeah, he did the speeches, but then they're like, but he's great. He he was charismatic. But he's like, yeah, but he was not real good or any had the speeches, but he was great. <laughs> so they did the same thing with White Rosh, Ric Flair. I mean, they didn't talk about anything. He kind of talked about how he wasn't paying his taxes, but he didn't talk about how he got out of that or all the women he slept around. And saying that uh, he was, you know, lost so m many of his marriages because of that. Um, they talked about his kids. That was good. I mean, he even talked about Reed Flair. I mean, a good chunk of it was about Reed Flair. It was good. And it was good, but I would say they definitely whitewashed the hell of it. They didn't even bring up the his run in TNA. They totally didn't bring that up. But you saw Andrade standing there with uh, Andrade, well, El Idolo, whatever they his name now is, uh, in on the show. But yeah, he's married to Charlotte now. But um. And, you know, they did the same thing with Whitewash Hogan. I mean, they like, oh, we'll wait a few years, and then, you know what we'll do? 
we'll have him do his I'm sorry tour, apology tour, and then we'll bring him in, and then he'll give his speech to the roster, and he didn't even say, hey, uh, I made a mistake. He was like, you guys gotta be careful what you say, because you don't know you're being gonna be recorded. He didn't say, oh, I'm sorry for the bad things I said. And then everything was pretty much forgiven, right? And then I wouldn't doubt if Dark Side Ring does a story about that. And here's a big one. You, I, I'm pretty sure they gotta do one of Dark Side of Ring on this. Is the whole thing with Stone Cold Steve Austin when after he walked out in 2002 and he spiraled. Because one, he was hurt and frustrated with the storylines. And then his marriage was failing. And then at the same time, he he was beating Deborah. And so, uh, and then he ran from the cops for a little bit. And then uh, after the day, he's like, oh, we're going to bring Stone Cold back. It's like, so... Uh, the day lawyers, what we're gonna need you to do is to put a gag order on Deborah so she doesn't talk any shit about Stone Cold and bring out the dirty laundry so we won't be losing millions of dollars for bringing Stone Cold back. So, I mean, they do whitewashing all the time. I mean, some people deserve a second chance. People fuck up. I know when people are in pain. They do stuff they have to do to relieve the pain. And I understand that. But I've been in several relationships and I never hit a woman. So just because you're in pain, that doesn't give you a right to do that. But um, I just felt like it was a good show and it shows... How WWE does documentaries great. I mean, they even talked about his plane crash. Um, about how he had, like, his back was broken in three spots and stuff like that. He was out for, like, what, six months to uh, just under a year. And it was good. Uh, WWE knows how to do their documentaries really well. Too bad they can't do that with their fucking WWE product on Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. They can do it okay on the pay-per-views, but Monday Night Raw and SmackDowns are usually pretty horrible. But, it's good. If you want the bullshit version, you, you'll watch this. I mean, but, there's gotta be a Ric Flair Dark Side of the Ring, though. That would take his ass completely down. But I do like Ric Flair. I think he's definitely one of the greatest of all time. It's arguably, it's like, I mean, you got Stone Cold, Hogan, Ric Flair, The Rock. They're kind of like all like right there. So it's like, that's pretty much like my um, Mount Rushmore of wrestlers, if you ask me. Is those four. So, like I said, if you want to watch the bullshit version, yes, watch this. But just got to remember, they're uh, great. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's not even morning. It's actually 830 at night. But, um, so, I highly suggest it. So, I'll... Talk to you guys later. Thank you. Bye.